first to uh, double your lining so you've got two layers. This is for a smaller lining piece and then making sure you've still got two layers of lining, put two layers of your top fabric on top and place your main fabric piece on. This is because you need two layers of the small lining plus two, uh, sorry, two sides of the small lining and two sides of the larger lining and top lining and pin them in place. Okay. Good. So we now have the two pieces of the lining plus two pieces of the large lining and two pieces of the top lining. Pin these in place. Um, when you're pinning them, make sure that these lines, um, the arrowed lines, are along the straight of the fabric, so in line with the selvage part. Otherwise, it won't sit properly. And carefully cut them out. Okay, stop it. Take your lining piece and unpin it, or pieces, unpin them. And then you want to sew a quarter of an inch from the edge, um, three eighths, you know, thereabouts. So just about the width of your um, pressure foot. Um, back stitch and sew all the way around. Neatly. And back stitch. So you've now got your lining looking like that. The next thing is to Take it, push this aside with your finger, and this is fiddly. Put it under the machine, under the pressure foot, and making sure you pull apart and hold down, just take the second line along there so that you're sealing that seam. pull and press. Because it's curved you'll need to keep pulling your fabric upwards. And press. You can't do this quickly, it, it won't, won't do quickly. It will fold over in places because it's there's nothing you can do about that. But make sure you're pulling this so that it's nice and flat on the outside. Okay. I think that better shows the completed work. Oh, we'll do. And then there'll be a little bit there. Just trim that so that it's the same as the underneath bit. So the inside looks like this with the rough edge with two lines but the outside of it is neat and all finished off, all right? Next, you need to double fold these edges like so. If you put your finger down them like that, it will hold them and then get that under your needle. Back stitch. Doesn't need to be a big back stitch, just a little one. And then come down. So you then enclosed that. If you find it difficult to do the double fold, you can do a single fold first and take that through.
and then fold again and put your second line of stitching in but there's less stitching if you can manage to do your double fold neatly along the edge of your fold Okay, trim off any of the odd ends of cotton that you've got so that it's tidy. And then looking at your piece, you've got the bottom is slightly curved upwards and the top is curved a lot more and it's the top edge you need. Imagine it's a bra, that's your top and that's underneath. Okay, if you take Take the bias strip, fold it in half and put where you folded it in half. You just leave a mark so that you know where it is on the middle of your... You can put that against the seam, not against that, that, but against the actual seam itself. And then pin it into place across the top. And down the other side. Okay. Oops. And we sew again quite close, reasonably close to the edge. You do. You know, you'll find there's a little line actually on the bias um, tape. If you follow that as best you can, it doesn't need to be desperately accurate. And then come along. If you're careful and you don't go too fast, you can actually sew over your pins, providing you put them in this way round. Move your pins as you go. When you get to the end, turn it and come down here. Turn again. Making sure your piece of fabric is flat underneath and come back along this edge. And make sure that you back stitch over the end, leaving this um, free. So that's where the wire goes in. Yes, and then you, when you've finished you thread your wire through there. So that's the lining done. Then you need to take the top pieces. If you do your lining again first, and again Go down the centre piece. Same distance as you did the other one. And again, open it out and press it down and do a neat row And 
go and move some it along so that it's level. Yeah. I'll set that aside for a minute. And take your two top pieces, making sure that you have got the right sides of the fabric together. So, again, do exactly the same as you've done with the lining, please. So into the curve, short way away. Large a piece of lining first and make sure you've got the right side of the fabric to towards you so that's underneath the seams underneath the seams underneath right and then take your short lining and match the two pieces together like that and pin in the short lining in place. seam just a short way in just so just the three eighths or a quarter of an inch in round the curve do the same along the bottom so put the pieces together So now you've got your um, your pocket and your lining are all in one piece now. So we take that and we get our top piece and making sure that the right side of the top piece is to the right side of the lining. Again, line it up with your centre seam. Oh, 
where it rounds so that it the ends meet like so. And pin into place. So do your centre and your end pins first and then pin the fabric in between and stitch. the same with the bottom so matching the center seams and the ends and one side of the flat And again, stitch about three eighths of an inch or a quarter of an inch in from the edge. It's about one centimeter, is it? Mm, a little bit less than one centimeter. only see wrong sides. Where you've got the curve near the bottom you need to snip just to the sewing line being very careful that you don't catch the stitches. And at the top you need to start where it starts to curve round. Again snip just as far as the stitches but don't stick don't catch the stitch if you do happen to catch a stitch you will need to just sew over that again because it'll fall apart otherwise again particularly over the top bit make sure that the cuts you make into it are fairly close together Then next, you put your fingers, put your thumbs in and make sure that when you put your thumb in, you catch both the linings with one hand and just the top with the other and turn it inside out. Okay wiggle where it needs and then we need to press these now we come to pressing when you press it make sure that the um, things are nice and help fade out so that you don't get any lining around the front of the mask and then press right into the curve on that side and right up to the top. And then I'm going to turn it round and press the other side. Okay. So there you 
have one nicely pressed mask either on the wrong side of your fabric um, turn over this edge a little way and stitch down second fold this makes the um, channel for your elastic now take that right to the um, pocket but but don't sew over the pocket so but close as close to the edge as you can get it And then the other side if you think you can manage you can do a double fold so you don't have to do two lines of, of stitching but it is a bit fiddlier like that Just snip off your ends of cotton so they're not tickling your nose. Stick and you try round there, up there, and over the top. That will give you roughly how much elastic you need to thread through. So, right then. Find your needle, your threader for your elastic and go down from the top of the mask through the channel and you can find it. And up the other side. Okay. So you now have it, the elastic uh, threaded through. If you're lucky, you don't pull it out again. And check your length. You will need to put the Holding those two ends so they don't disappear. Put that over the back, under your chin, a bit over your nose. Hold it up there so it's nice and tight, so you can find the length that you need it. Which, okay, crooked like that, and then just tie a knot in it. Or you can sew it if you want to be tidy. And there you have one mask.